This is our conservatory. It's called the Matthew Horridge Conservatory. Um, when I took over the greenhouses in 2002, this was a jungle, and uh, some of the same plants were here, but it was not being maintained. So I got a group of students, actually turf students, that were looking for extra credit, and they came in here and just went to town for a whole semester, uh, and they ripped everything out. They took out half the concrete floors. They brought in different soils for the different areas. Um, and then sadly, one of them passed away from a brain in, or from oh an aortic God. aneurysm in the middle of the semester. So we named it after him, Matthew Horridge. So this is the Matthew Horridge Conservatory. Um, the, the pond there and a lot of the other work here has been done by my landscape management and by my uh, greenhouse class uh, many, many semesters over the years. Uh, and, a, and this facility is maintained by uh, Gabrielle Corky, the gardeners for the botanic gardens, and, and some students. And uh, the challenge in here is to get plants that will fit and not outgrow the, the, the area. So whereas we used to have real bananas, I brought in my little door for end banana, so that's what that is. Uh, but we have an economic botany section over here with uh, coffee and tamarind and uh, papaya and mango and things like that and vanilla. Uh, and then we have an, or just an ornamental section over there with pittosporum and a bunch of ferns and things like that. This is the desert section, which is a different soil type. It doesn't receive the same amount of irrigation. Um, and then we have our water garden over there and whatever that represents. So um, it's a beautiful little area. We've had a lot of fun classes in here. We had a landscape lighting class in here last uh, a year ago. And we came in and we light, lit up all these different areas and then took pictures. Um, so that's what life is like here. We just, you know, something's happening all the time.
So they really needed to know what mixed with the good guys. And they've been doing it for a while now. And you can actually, there's an app you can drop on your iPhone now, and you can look and say, okay, I just spent you know, $130 on these insects, and I'm still not, and, and now I see this other problem. What can I use here that's going to have the least effect on my good guys? Um, Endeavor, Pymetrazine, is one that I've um, recently relied on. I mean, I know Brian says we don't really use chemicals. We don't generally. But there's a downtime, right? Um, <laughs> but we have got... Uh, a, a door prize today for so we're, um, between Farm Bureau and your eye we're putting together we have a door prize worth over three hundred and fifty dollars, uh, which is a sensors that, that Larry can tell us about. Um, so, <coughs> but you need to be a Farm Bureau member to be able to get a ticket and participate. But it just so happens that if you're not a Farm Bureau member, you can become one today for twenty five dollars, which is a uh, basement bargain price or bargain you can get price. It's cheap. <laughs> so for twenty five bucks, you can be a member and uh, have a pretty darn good chance of winning this more than three hundred and fifty dollars worth of just equipment. And Larry says he will install it on your car. So I, I can't even imagine what all that is worth. So anyway. Larry, Larry, you can sit. We're going to talk about sensor options for real-time monitoring of uh, crops and facilities. I'm in uh, Coventry. I've been in Coventry, well, I've been in Rhode Island for about 38 years. I grew up in Oklahoma on a farm, but uh, I've, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about where I'm coming from here and so forth. Uh, but I've always been interested in farming uh, all my life, and even though I've been in the computer world, and uh, I, I now farm vicariously. Here, uh, first thing you need, well, first thing you need is a router. Everybody, I'm sure, has a router and a, and a modem. Sometimes these are, these are combined, but you've got internet, you've got a router, <coughs> and uh, it's got ports on the back that you plug your computers into. It's fleet. They have a battery. They have little, uh, a little cell. I don't have one. They have hearing aids or watches and so forth. And uh, this sensor goes to sleep, and uh, you. You program it to say, wake up every 15 minutes, or every 30 minutes, whatever you say. Wake up, read the, temp the, the uh, temperature, uh, try to find a signal that you can communicate with, find, find the strongest signal in the area you can find, and uh, send a reading to that uh, device. By far my favorite, uh, uh, by far the best value of the money, $280 device plus a tripod if you need it, and it records temperature, humidity, rainfall, wind speed, direction, pressure, and solar radiation, and the uh, The way to use the weather station as opposed to the sensors is to register it with a wonderful uh, site called Weather Underground, which is now owned by uh, the Weather Channel, barely a problem. So, when the data is sent to the internet, uh, then you can, uh, I've already mentioned, you can uh, set up alerts to be sent to you when the readings exceed. Uh, all of this information is on my website. I've set up a website called the Midland Farm Sensors.org. Uh, and I have the first one in Rhode Island. It will be Joe here, who's in the process of uh, working, setting up Pippin Archer on it. But uh, most of my work so far has been in Mass in uh, Connecticut. Jack Mannix here at, uh, at Walker Farm in Vermont, this number is wrong, he's now up to 21 sensors. He's the, the farm of the most. Uh, uh, so uh, let me show you how these uh, tend to get deployed. Uh, the closest farm to Rhode Island right now is Chris Clay over in Savant, uh, at Four Town Farm. And um, here we have, uh, he's got a, a, an office right here where the router is. Meanwhile, all the facilities are clear over here. That's you know several hundred feet, and so I was afraid to put the gateway over here because I knew this was going to be a problem even if I put repeaters. So we put one of these point-to-point -point bridges uh, here in the barn, a wall, big stone wall right here. Uh, the, the router is over here in the, the farmhouse. Uh, 
uh, but I needed to get the signal all over here, so we put the wire for sixty to one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Here's a what they call an industrial version. Uh, 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 I'm trying to attempt to show you some one, one effort uh, some live data here. And